Warning. The following SCP reading contains graphic descriptions and images. Viewer discretion is advised. Item number SCP-940 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures All known samples of SCP-940 larvae are currently in containment. Systematic purging of SCP-940 adult samples from civilians is currently, as of, being spearheaded by a combination of Area 14 research personnel and Mobile Task Force Omicron 7, Orkin. Samples of Foundation strengthened. Seek documentation regarding Agent Blue are in the process of being added to commercially available insecticides, which is expected to prevent any more wild strains of SCP-940 from arising. All SCP-940 infectees are to be treated as Class IV biohazards, and are to be contained and transported under heavy sedation to Area 14, or otherwise terminated. Deceased bodies infected with any SCP-940 strain, regardless of the developmental stage, are to be incinerated. SCP-940 is a parasitoid organism with some superficial similarities to the troglobitic members of the class Arachnida. Adult specimens are highly agile and possess leg spans from 4 to 7 meters. Due to the difficulty in separating SCP-940 from their hosts, see below, Average weight and body size are moot considerations. Each of their eight translucent legs is dotted regularly with six types of specialized sensory organs. IR-sensitive pit organs, ampullae of Lorenzini, compound and non-compound eye sensitive to UV, and two additional organs of indeterminate function and in and large tarsal claws. Possessing scopulae and set tools common among species of hunting spiders and allowing them to climb sheer vertical surfaces with ease. SCP-940 possess a radial nerve net similar to Asteroidea, or the common starfish, and no central nervous system. The possibility that SCP-940 rely on their host's brain power for processing of external stimuli cannot be ruled out at this time. Infection occurs following exposure to body fluids containing SCP-940 eggs and larvae. The life cycle of SCP-940, from initial infection to maturity, is as follows. Stage, Symptom Progression, and Documentation 1. Infection occurs with exposure to bodily fluids contaminated with SCP-940 eggs and or larvae. While larvae at this point are too small to be seen by the human eye, microscopic testing have revealed eggs are typically no larger than 3 to 5 microns in diameter. SCP-940 larvae the only stage of its life cycle with many organ systems necessary for survival prior to integration with a host possess leg spans from 7 to 17 microns. Stage 2 The first SCP-940 larvae to hatch will begin cannibalizing any unhatched eggs, then each other, in order to ensure only one larva develops into an adult within a given host. Hosts will often complain of abdominal and chest pain to this stage. Note, Cases of as many as five larvae reaching maturity within a single host, though rare due to competitiveness between larvae for a host and the enormous strain placed upon the host body, have been documented. See Incident 940-01, Subject 04. Stage 3 The remaining SCP-940 larva migrates to the chest cavity, typically attaching to a major artery, the heart or spinal cord positioned with its legs oriented towards the host's back. Internal organ systems of the larva begin atrophying. Stage 4 The carapace of SCP-940 larva's body breaks down. Legs remain intact. The circulatory system of the larva conjoins with that of the host, as does its nervous system, though to a lesser extent. The larva begins producing a number of enzymes which cause the host's body to increase production of a number of hormones, including human growth hormones. Earlier abdominal and chest pain subsides. The host experiences an increase in appetite and general listlessness. Stage 5 Approximately three weeks after initial infection, SCP-940 begins to alter serotonin and dopamine levels in the host's brain, causing hosts to experience feelings of happiness and well-being. 
The legs of the larva, now supplied blood and nutrients by the host's circulatory system, begin to penetrate the skin of the host's back. Hosts typically do not report any discomfort or alarm at this, and rarely seek treatment. Stage 6 Approximately five weeks after initial infection, SCP-940 reaches full size and maturity. Hosts are secretive about their condition. A form of communication is believed to occur between SCP-940 and its host. For example, hosts have displayed a vague awareness of things occurring behind them. SCP-940 specimens often retract their legs, folding them flat against the host's back, allowing them to be concealed with relative ease by clothing. Additionally, SCP-940 triggers an increase in the levels of testosterone in the host's body, leading to increased libido. Infection of new hosts is facilitated through contact with bodily fluids contaminated with SCP-940 eggs. This is usually accomplished via coitus with an infected host. Stage 7 All infected individuals that have survived six weeks of infection are considered to be in Stage 7. Stage 7 infectees report the loss of a sense of individuality, gradual clouding of the eyes leading to loss of eyesight and culminating in near-total blindness, and bouts of catatonia and catalepsy. Death is typically due to aneurysm caused by skyrocketing blood pressure, heart or kidney failure, or exsanguination. Infected at this stage can be identified by the strange choking sound they issue as they attempt to draw in more oxygen than is possible. When the host biologically dies, SCP-940 will continue to animate the corpse by means of its limbs, entering a berserk state. In this state, SCP-940 will attempt to reproduce and infect with no regard for concealment, at times inflicting sexual violence in order to do so. This state can last from one to three days before SCP-940 expires. Treatment with intravenous antiparasitic compound is possible if administered prior to infection advancing to Stage 3. Addendum. Stage 6 and above adult SCP-940 samples, when not attempting to conceal their identities, are extremely agile and capable predators. Through the use of their powerful limbs and multiple sensory organs, they are highly adept at evading capture. Field agents are to be highly cautious and equipped with MOPP-4 gear at all times to prevent infection, and Foundation-issued nerve gas grenades for suppression purposes. Incident Log 940-01 Incident 940-01 On Assistant Researcher Failed to return a live sample of SCP-940 larvae to cold storage instead allowing the sample to remain unattended in the lab for approximately 45 minutes while on lunch break. The resulting breach of containment resulted in seven SCP-940 infections amongst research and security personnel, and another five in D-Class personnel. The affected wing of Area 14 was isolated for decontamination, and infected Foundation personnel administered intravenous antiparasitic compound. All received treatment within six hours of infection and made full recoveries. Infected D-Class personnel were isolated for observation so as to establish a progression of SCP-940 infection and determine for how long it remains treatable. Observations of subjects D-940-01, D-940-02, and D-940-03 from the basis of the infections given progression above. Subject D-940-04 is the only infectee that did not follow the above reported progression, due to multiple larvae reaching maturity. D-940-04 was terminated three weeks into the process, when the accelerated symptoms resulted in her progression to Stage 7, completely bypassing Stages 5 and 6. Subject D-940-05 was initially believed to be uninfected, displaying no symptoms of SCP-940 infection after three weeks. A full examination found D-940-05 to be pregnant. The unborn fetus was infected. The fetus, D-940-06, was allowed to mature. D-940-05 was kept unaware of its condition. Both expired when the legs of SCP-940 penetrated D-940-05's uterus. D-940-06 is preserved, kept in cryogenic storage at Armed Biocontainment Area 14 for study.